In grade 10, we focus on linear relations, where we know that the graph is going to produce a straight line. There are three different ways that we can write the equation of those linear relations, and we're going to take a look at the first one today, which is what we call slope-intercept form. Now think about what we already know about graphs. If we have a linear graph, it's going to make that straight line. We know the x-intercept is where the graph crosses on the x-axis. We know the y-intercept is where the graph crosses on the y-axis. Every time we have an x-intercept, we know that y is zero. We are neither above nor below that y-axis. We're right on there where y is zero. We know that if we have a y-intercept, x is always zero. We are right on where x is zero. We're neither to the left nor to the right. I'm gonna take a look at what happens when we graph this line. I can choose any value for x, substitute it into this function, and get my y-coordinate. I just happen to pick these three values, so I'm going to take my x value, substitute it into the function, and generate my y-coordinate. Now, when I go to do this one, if x is zero, anything times zero is zero, so that whole term is gone, and I'm just left with four, and then one times negative two is negative two, plus four is positive two. So I've gone ahead and plotted those three points, and then because this is a function, I have continuous data. I could choose either a fraction or a decimal for my x value. So we're going to have points all along here. I've gone ahead and connected them and I've put arrows to indicate that that's going to continue to go in both directions. I'm now going to do the same thing with my next line, but in order to make a table of values and to easily generate those points, we want to isolate the y. So what I'm going to do is divide out that 3 and then remember when we divide out the 3, we need to do it for both terms. 3 divided by 3 is 1y, and then I'm going to divide both the 4x and the negative 15 by 3. And when we do that, we end up with this function. Now, I can choose anything for x, so I could go negative 1, 0, positive 1 again. But if I look at the denominator, I can see that this is a 3. I want points that I can quickly do mentally. So if I put in a negative 3, and maybe let's just take a look at this here. If I go 4 times 3, so 4 thirds times negative 3 minus 5, because this negative 3 is over 1, we can see that these are going to quickly divide out and give us that negative 4. And then I can go negative 4 minus 5 gives me that negative 9. If I substitute a 0 in for x, 0 times anything, that term is gone, leaving me with a negative 5. And then similar with positive 3. If I put a positive 3, that cancels with the denominator. 4 minus 5 gives me negative 1. So I've also gone ahead and plotted those points. Okay, so now we're back up at the beginning because this particular equation for a linear relation is called slope-intercept form. So maybe let's take a look what's happening with the slope, and I'm going to tell you this is the y-intercept. Now we know a y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So I could go to my table of values and see when x is 0, y is 4, or I can just take a look at the graph and see my I'm crossing the y-axis at 4. So my y-intercept is 4. Now my slope, I know it's a negative slope, we're falling to the right, and we can see we're going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, etc. So my slope is negative 2 over 1. Okay, so now this is interesting because notice we've got a negative 2 here and we've got a 4 here. We can't draw a conclusion with one example, so let's see what happens with the next one. We know we have a y-intercept when x is 0, so my y-intercept is negative 5. And then my slope, we can see it's a positive slope. If I choose any two points, we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3. My slope is positive 4 thirds, my y-intercept is negative 5. Now, here we go. Same thing happens. And you mathematicians figured it out. This is called slope-intercept form for a linear equation because this represents the slope and this number represents our y-intercept. In previous years of study, you were asked to get the equation of a line, and a lot of times it was guess and check with a table of values to see what was happening. Well, watch how much easier your life is about to become because we now know that y equals mx plus b is one form of an equation for a linear relation. So if we can take the y-intercept, in this case it looks like it's at negative 1, and then if we can find any two points along this graph, so maybe let's look for where it crosses here, it crosses nicely there. Then we can get the slope. We know it's going to be positive. 1, 2, 3, we're rising. 1, 2, 3, 4, we're running. So our slope becomes positive 3 quarters. 
And now we've got y equals m x plus b. And because my b is negative, I'm going to multiply that positive with a negative sign, and there's my equation. Can we easily identify a y-intercept? Can we get a slope? If so, we can use slope-intercept form to get the equation of the line. So I can see my y-intercept in this next graph is 1, and we also have a negative slope. We're falling to the right, and I'm going down 2 over 3. Always reduce your slope if you're able to. And then again, y equals m x plus b, there is my equation. We're now asked to graph the following equations, and the first thing you need to do is recognize that this is slope-intercept form. This is our slope, this is our y-intercept, and we need a point to begin with. So the only point we know for sure is that y-intercept. So I'm going to begin by plotting a y-intercept of three, and then I'm going to use this slope to rise two and run three, and there is my next point. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go one, two up, one, two, three over, and there is another point. I'm going to go also one, two down, one, two, three to the left, because remember we can have a negative divided by a negative, also gives us that slope of positive two thirds. And then I'm going to take a ruler and as close as you can go through the points. You need to put arrowheads on the end to indicate that it is going to continue. And there is my first line. All right, again, we recognize this is slope-intercept form. Start with a point. The y-intercept is the point given to us at negative 1. We have a negative slope now. So we're going down 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right, or up 1, 2, 3, and to the left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make sure that our slope is falling to the left. That's because of that negative slope. We're going to conclude by looking at how to do this on your graphing calculator. So you finally get to use those expensive pieces of technology that you bought at the beginning of the semester. And I'm gonna pull up my calculator in a second here and show you how to do this. But the first thing we have to do is set the window. The window is the screen on your calculator that shows the graph. We're going to set the window to these settings. This is the default. So every time you reset your calculator, this is what you're gonna do. So the X minimum maximum scale, the Y minimum maximum scale. That means on the X axis, the lowest number we're gonna see is negative 10. The highest number we're gonna see is positive 10. And this scale of one means that every one unit, there is a tick mark. The Y scale, my minimum Y value I see is negative 10. The maximum Y value we see is positive 10. And a scale of one means that every time we see a tick mark, that is one unit. You can play around with the window to see how that changes what part of the graph you can see. I'm also gonna link in the description box below a separate little video you can watch on how the window on a graphing calculator works. I'm going to use this calculator to graph the first one that we just did by hand. So I'm gonna begin by checking the window and you can see this is the negative 10, positive 10 with a scale of one, negative 10, positive 10 with a scale of one. I'm gonna go into y equals and when we enter this, you have to use brackets to put your fraction in here. So I'm gonna go bracket two and then divided by three, close the bracket. We're gonna press this variable key here and then we're gonna go plus three. And then we're gonna press the graph button and you're going to see that this graph is similar to the one that we just drew. Now, just to show you how this window works, let's say I change my window to negative 20 on the x-axis. Now when I graph it, it changes the part of the graph that we can see. So whereas our window used to stop here, by moving this now to negative 20, you can see how that's changed. If I change my scale, so maybe let's do a scale of five. So that means every five units, you're going to see a tick mark. So now we can see this is negative five, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, and so on. 